Welcome to the College Football Tailgate Show presented by Football Game Plan. I am David Hassegan. I am joined as always by the czar of the playbook, Emery Hunt. It is the final week of the regular season in the FBS, and that can mean only one thing, rivalries. That is the theme of today's show. For you, Emery, there are a ton of great rivalry games. What are the best ones do you think there are in college football, and it may not be in the FBS. Yeah, because you look at some games and people will have their say and their vote. They will say, we're wrong. This is the biggest robbery. I get that. I understand all of that. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm a big fan of Florida, Florida State. I know the game hasn't been what it used to be right. in recent years, but Florida, Florida State used to be must-see TV every Saturday. Best game I saw was the comeback with Danny Connell leading the Florida Gators back to that famous 31-31 tie. And then the other game, a few years later, you saw Florida State get all of the Florida Gators, uh, you know, just sacking Danny Warfel, turn his helmet the other way, and it just mm. beat him up. And then you look at what they did later on that year in the rematch in the Sugar Bowl. Florida got their revenge, won the national championship because of it. So I like Florida, Florida State. It's usually the best matchup, I think, of the week. I right, See, for me, it's one of those rivalries that hasn't been played in a while, and it should be played again and that's the backyard brawl. Pitt versus West Virginia easily is one of the most heated rivalries in all of college sports, in any sport, but especially on the football field, especially during the 90s when both teams were kind of at that peak, especially Pitt, which have kind of fallen off a little bit, but West Virginia hasn't been strong recently either. I would love to see those two get back at each other's throats because that was a tremendous game. And they're only an hour apart from Pittsburgh to Morgantown. That's exactly. a, right down I-79. So that one that should happen more often than what we see it. I will also throw in Harvard Yale. Mm. Um, it's the, one of the oldest ones that we've seen in the country. It's a classic one. And this past Harvard Yale game, one that had a lot of memorable, you know, memorable, very memorable. <laughs> we had a protest at halftime, no lights at the stadium. So a lot of intrigue. Plus we had a double overtime game. So great matchup always a great game and it's usually the most attended game of the year hmm. between those two programs and honestly though my favorite rivalry of all time is army versus navy you talk about the brevity the rivalry the competitiveness but also the the pageantry that's involved with this game if you haven't been to an army navy game folks get to one sometime in your life it's absolutely worth it it's tremendous i think it's in philadelphia this year i think it's coming back up to new york i believe in either 2020 or 2021 so it's definitely worth going to yeah i've been to one army navy game and it was the one in baltimore mm. where army broke that long losing streak to navy and helped jumpstart army resurgence what the last five years yeah. you know you look at that team now they're a powerhouse now they're they're not having a great year this year they're five and six but army got that got over the hump in that that robbery game against their you know against navy in baltimore and kind of helped catapult them into national prominence and they, we saw them rip, rip off what three to four great years up there at west point and we will focus on a lot on fbs rivalries in today's show but we want to talk about one fcs rivalry game going on this weekend that's going to be a huge one it's the Bayou Classic, Grambling versus Southern. It's always a big game when these two teams face off, but this year it's for the SWAC West title to see who faces all corn in the SWAC title game. Huge implications in this one. Yeah, you're talking about a rival that dates back to the 1940s, but in the Superdome since 1975, when the Superdome was built, Bayou Classic game right there. So this game has been played in New Orleans Thanksgiving weekend since 1975. So it's a great matchup. And if you're grambling, you love coming into this ball game with something on the line. They've won five or six straight games, so they're coming in red hot. Southern is right now one in the West. They're playing great defense. Skelton, their quarterback, is outstanding. Hunter Register is one of the best receivers in the country, 6'6", 215. So there's a lot of intrigue in this ball game. And if I'm looking at the matchup, it's going to be Grambling's defense against Southern's offense. Southern doesn't, they don't throw much, but mm. when they do, they go to register down the sideline. They love to run the football, so if Grambling can stop the run, they can win this game. Now, the real question is, though, which of these two teams is the harder matchup for Alcorn? Because that's the other thing we have to talk about here is, yeah, they're facing each other this week, but as an analyst, what would you say is going to be the tougher opponent for Alcorn? Who do, you, who do they not want to see going into the Swag title game? That's a great question because we saw this matchup last year where Alcorn and Southern played a great game. Southern, at that point, couldn't stop the run, and Deion, uh, uh, Waller, the running back for Alcorn, ran all over the Southern Jaguars defense. Alcorn is still outstanding. They get great play from their running game as well. Their defense is excellent. I think if you're looking at a team that could potentially be a problem, you have to look at Grambling because they can throw the football. 
Jeremy Hickbottom is outstanding and working touchdown and check down. So Grambling's passing game could potentially give Alcorn a problem more so than Southern being able to run the football because I think that's running right into the teeth of that defense. So going back to the Bayou Classic now, who wins this ball game and why? Oh, this is going to be tough. Whatever you think going in, you can't expect on the outcome. This game may start off as a blowout. It's going to end up being close, and it's going to be a, a tight one down the stretch. I do like Southern to win this one. I do think the Jaguars, because of how well they play defensively and because of what they do up front with Ladarius Skelton, the quarterback, doing a great job in spearheading that running attack, I think Southern gets the win against Grambling. Going to be a huge game to be sure. And when we come back here on the College Football Tailgate Show, we will have all of the FBS rivalry games that you can handle coming up in today's show. We'll be right back after this quick message. Stay with us. Football game plan is brought to you in part by Ninth and Lux. Visit the website ninthandlux.com and check out the clothing gallery. Do you music with featured artist IW and his latest album, Season 2? You can check that out on iTunes as well as doyoumusic.com. Nesby Phipps, art, life, entertainment. Nesbyphipps.com. Grind It Out Fitness. Visit the website grinditoutfitness.com and download the app. What's up, NFL fans? I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and don't forget to check out and purchase your copy of our latest football game plan book, Stiff Arming Football Myths. We have these available in both PDF and paperback form. Be sure to order your copy of the Go Go Offense by Coach Brennan Marion on footballgameplan.com slash go go offense. Coach Marion goes through the ins and outs of his explosive offense, one that's tearing up the college football field and putting a lot of points on the scoreboard. Again, you can order your copy at footballgameplan.com slash go go offense. This is the College Football Tailgate Show. It's rivalry Saturday in the FBS, so let's get right into some of the big rivalry games that may impact the playoff picture. We start with the Civil War as Oregon hosts Oregon State. Can the Ducks recover after a tough loss to Arizona State last week? New Year's Bowl may be still a possibility, though, for the Ducks. It's not a possibility because they blew it against Arizona State. Mm. If you're Oregon, you like their offensive line. You like their receivers that can make things happen after the catch defensively. You love what they do up front. So they are a good football team, don't get me wrong. And maybe you're sort of right about them still having an outside chance at a New Year's Six Bowl, but the playoffs is done for them because of what they did last week against the Sun Devils. But in this ball game, everyone will be talking about quarterback Justin Herbert and what he is, you know, down the line as far as pro prospects. But don't sleep on Jake Luton, the quarterback of Oregon State. Mm. He has quietly been the most consistent QB in the Pac-12, probably the best quarterback in the Pac-12, not named Tyler Huntley. So this is going to be a big game for him. And what makes this game even more intriguing, Oregon State needs this win to become bowl eligible. What a mm. great way to get that program back on the right track by becoming bowl eligible by knocking off the Oregon Ducks. So I do think we'll see a good quarterback duel in this matchup. I'm going to take the upset. I'm going to go with Oregon State getting their sixth win against the Oregon Ducks. An upset already on the cards. Next up, Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. There's a reason they call this game Bedlam. It's always got a lot of points, but Oklahoma needs this win to make an impression on the selection committee for the playoffs. Well, they've made an impression because every game Oklahoma plays, it seems to come down to the last minute, whether it's a, mm. a loss lead, they, they allowed Iowa State to come back in that ball game, or a tight game against TCU where a freak turnover, 99-yard fumble return, goes all the way back for a touchdown, and now they're in a tight game against the Horned Frogs. So this game... Will we learn more about the Oklahoma defense or will we learn about the running game of Oklahoma State? We know they are outstanding in running the football, one of the best running backs in the country they have in the backfield. So it will go back and forth. There will be a lot of points scored, but if you have to trust a quarterback down the stretch, clutch moments, I'm going with Jalen Hurts. I like Oklahoma. Our next game is a game that the last few years has been pretty important. Not so much this year, but still a very good game. The Legends Trophy between Notre Dame and Stanford. Much bigger game for Notre Dame than it is for the Cardinals. Yeah, the Cardinals is down this year, and that's not what we're used to seeing from a David Shaw coach football team. So mm. Notre Dame quietly is still 9-2. and two. Mm. You talk about a team looking at one of those New Year's Six Bowl games, that's Notre Dame. And if they can go and get a, a big win against a name program in Stanford, it's going to help their case because no one wants to keep a 10-2 Notre Dame team out of a big-time, primetime bowl game. So huge game for Notre Dame. 
I think Ian Book does a great job. I like how they play. Brian Kelly has gotten his team to play consistent football throughout the year. Yes, they have those two losses, but I think they will take care of business against Stanford. Stanford is a down year. Even when they've played uh, FCS teams, it has been close. So this is just not a good Stanford team. I think they're 4-8 and eight right now. So I look at Notre Dame winning this one against the Cardinal. Let's move on to the next game now, and it's the game. Ohio State versus Michigan. Massive implications if there's any stumbling block left for the Buckeyes, it's this one against a Michigan team that recently has been in really good form. Yeah, quietly, since that drop in the end zone against Penn State, Michigan's offense hasn't looked back. They have kicked it into high gear. Shea Patterson is playing great football down the stretch, and they meet a huge matchup up front against Chase Young and the Buckeyes defense. So we will find out if Michigan can run the football. They're going to have to be able to run the football. I know it's easier said than done. And that's one thing you want to do against a great pass rusher. You want to turn him into a run defender. So it's going to be up to them to try to neutralize that pressure by running right at it. And you're going to have to hit your, your timely shots deep down the field if you're Shea Patterson. So you're going to have to play the long game against Ohio. So you can't play the short game and try to, okay, we're going to go point for point. But if you're the Buckeyes, you're going to have to come out and you're going to have to make sure you set the tone offensively. Justin Fields is still one of the top three players, I believe, in the country for the Heisman Trophy. We're going to learn more about J.K. Dobbins and, and what he can do to try to put a stranglehold on a Doak Walker award. He's been playing great down the stretch, top running back award. So this is going to be a great game, as these contests always are. Last year, they got blown out by mm -hmm. Dwayne Haskins in that passing game. This will be a little bit different. I think Michigan is much better offensively to compete. So I see Ohio State winning, but it won't be the big blowout that we saw last year. On to the Palmetto State. It's the Palmetto Bowl. Clemson taking on South Carolina. This is really the last test for Clemson before they get put into the playoff field as an undefeated, pretty much. The last four games, Clemson has blown out everybody. So they've taken offense to the initial college football playoff rankings that put them outside of the top four. And just so happens they face a team in South Carolina that's not a very good football team. Will Muschamp has tried this year to get his team to play up the par. I mean, we saw him was able to get his team motivated enough to beat Georgia. But this is just not a good football team in a rivalry game. Uh, they don't have the playmakers that we saw from them last year with Adebo Samuel being able to make a play or two. But this is an angry Clemson team, one that's firing on all cylinders offensively and defensively. They're starting to look a lot like of what we saw from them last season. This is a bad matchup for the Gamecocks. I like the Tigers. On to the next one now. This is one of my favorite names of rivalry game, clean, old-fashioned hate. Georgia at Georgia Tech. We know Georgia Tech has had a rough season. They lost to an FCS team early this year in the Citadel. Georgia still holding on to that last playoff spot. They need to win with style points in this one. They do, because I'm not as sold on Georgia as many people are. I don't have them fourth in the country right now. They're about six right now, and that's a shaky six. I think mm. Utah could beat Georgia if they were to meet up on a football field. But in this game, I know Jeff Collins does a great job in coaching his guys up. Tough transition from year one to going from an option team to trying to go to that pro style offense. So you expect what they're going through this year is why they lost to the Citadel uh, earlier in the season. But I do think Georgia will come in, take care of business, make a statement, and really pounce the Yellow Jackets. The next one here is no introduction. Alabama, Auburn, it's the Iron Bowl. This will be the first real test, though, without Tua for the Crimson Tide. Here's the difference in this ball game. I don't think it's even about uh, Brown, the quarterback for uh, Jones. I'm sorry, Mark Mac Jones for, the, uh, for Alabama. I think it's more so about... Bo Nix and him going up against this Alabama defense. Can't he make those necessary plays to beat a pressure style defense in Alabama? That's going to be the biggest key. That is still a big question mark for me. Everything else I'm not worried about. Alabama is Alabama. Their offense will be their offense. Now, up front, keeping Derrick Brown out of the backfield will be key. I think their offensive line will do a solid job. I don't trust Bo Nix in this matchup against Saban, true freshman quarterback against the Nick Saban defense. I like Alabama. When we come back, we have more rivalries to get to. You won't want to miss it, so stay right here with the College Football Tailgate Show. Football Game Plan is brought to you in part by Financial Coaching LLC, Investment, Retirement, Security. Stewardship Credit, Financial Growth is in your hands. StewardshipCredit.com. Adrian Marie Photo, Photographer, Writer, Management. AdrianMariePhotography.com. Lock Multimedia. 
Welcome back to the Football Game Plan College Football Tailgate Show. Emory, we have a lot more rivalry games to get to, so let's not waste any more time. The battle for the old Oaken Bucket is next. Indiana taking on Purdue. Quietly, the Hoosiers have put together a good season in the Big Ten. The question is, can Purdue match up? Well, we saw Purdue cover the spread last week against Wisconsin, and that was a big game right there in the Big Ten. Purdue's offense has the potential to put points up on the board defensively. I don't think they can stop what Indiana brings to the table in the passing game. You're right. Indiana has had a fantastic year, uh, a quiet good season for the Hoosiers in that program, and they've been playing really inspired ball. So I do think they'll take care of uh, Purdue and knock them off as well. One of the more ugly rivalries in all of college football, and I mean that in the best way possible, is the Governor's Cup. Louisville versus Kentucky. It's been much more competitive in recent years with Kentucky's rise. Louisville has always been a solid program over the last few years. How do we see this one going, though? Well, it's good to see Louisville back on the, the positive side. Great job down there by Coach Satterfield. And because this program was, after Lamar Jackson left, it really was a terrible uh, mm -hmm. program. And now they're good, they're competitive. Kentucky provides a unique challenge. You know, their offense is a little bit different uh, with Bodnett quarterback, who is a former receiver. So I think we'll learn more about the defense side of the ball for both teams. And I think when you look at Louisville and how well they're playing defensively, they'll be up, they'll take care of business. I think they get a win against an SEC team. That's going to be a huge one for sure. Next up, we have a game that you have some experience in. UL Monroe taking on Louisiana, the battle on the bayou. Louisiana comes in on a real hot streak here, and UL Monroe needs to win this ballgame. Here's the matchup. You talk about the Raging Cajuns and top five in the nation in running the football. Two offensive linemen are going to be playing in postseason all-star games. Robert Hunt, the guard, is going to the Senior Bowl, and the right tackle, uh, Dotson, Kevin Dotson is going to the East-West Shrine game. So their right side is tremendous. That's pro players on the right side. They also have four tailbacks in the backfield, three of which are tremendous, along with their quarterback, Levi Lewis, who is starting to now find his rhythm as a dual-threat guy. What I like about UL Monroe is the quarterback, Caleb Evans. If the last name sounds familiar, his brother was Gerard Evans, who played at Virginia Tech a couple of years ago, that 2016 class that led them to the ACC title game and had that big matchup against uh, Dak Prescott in, the, um, in a bowl game in the Gator Bowl, I believe it was. But Caleb Evans is everything for UL Monroe. The problem is their defense is atrocious. Mm -hmm. And that's not what you want to hear when you're facing the number one rushing team in the conference and standing in the way from their birth in the championship game against Appalachian State for a rematch. I like the Cadence to win big. And we're on to the next one now. It is the Sunshine Showdown, and you talked about it a little bit in the pregame. Florida State taking on Florida. Expect the unexpected when these two teams match up. It never doesn't matter what the records are. Something crazy is going to happen here. Definitely. You're dealing with an interim coach at Florida State, so expect all of the tricks to come out of the bag in this ball game, this rivalry game, because it's not just about the matchup on the field. This is a recruiting game. Mm. And you want to out-recruit the Gators if you're Florida State and vice versa. But in this game, when you talk about defense, no one talks about how good Florida has played this year. Mm. I like their offense. Van Jefferson is a really good receiver, and he's done a great job. He's also going to the East-West Shrine game. Florida State can run the football. If they stick with the run, the run game can have, help them out in this one. Can, they can have success against the Gators. I don't think they will do so. I like Florida to win this ball game. This mm. is one Gators football team that I think has been solid all, all year long. Out to the West Coast now for the next one, the Territorial Cup. Arizona taking on Arizona State. Two teams going in very different directions. Arizona State coming in hot off that upset win over Oregon. The Wildcats, not so much. They got blown out by the Utah Utes last week. How do we see this one going, though? Because rivalry game, you throw out the records. You throw out the records, but you also want to see how Arizona State handles success. They have 32 freshmen this year, redshirt or true freshmen, that's playing football for them this season. So this is a young football team. And remember, they started out 5-1 and one on the year, and they were exciting. They were, we had them ranked in our top 25. We talked about them a lot on this show. And then they went on that four-game losing streak. Young team couldn't handle success. They get a big upset against Oregon. So we'll find out if they've learned from the, the failures of earlier in the year when they had a big win against Cal. So I'm interested to see how that plays out. But they have the best quarterback in this ball game in Jaden Daniels, the true freshman quarterback. Mm. Their left tackle is a true freshman. He's 17 years old. So you're dealing with a 17-year-old left tackle, a true freshman quarterback as well. That's 18 at quarterback. So I think they're, they're super young. Next year, they're going to be a problem in the Pac-12. I think they're going to be a problem for Arizona. I like the Sun Devils to win. Moving back to the SEC now for our next matchup, Vanderbilt taking on Tennessee. It's the 114th meeting between these two schools. Tennessee, after a rough start, has put together an okay season. Vanderbilt still struggling a bit this year. 
Is this the Vols to lose? But this is Vanderbilt's game the last couple of years. Vanderbilt has yeah. quietly had Tennessee's number, which is unheard of. For me, growing up, Tennessee never lost to Vanderbilt. So this is a huge game for Tennessee. And you're right, Tennessee has turned it on toward the latter part of the season. They have been playing much better uh, as of late. So Tennessee, I think, is playing with all the momentum. But if you're Vanderbilt, you come into this ballgame, hey, we beat this team before. You're coming in with all the confidence. I don't see them knocking off. Uh, the Volunteers, I like them over Vanderbilt. And we move to our last game, one with huge playoff implications. It's the battle for Paul Bunyan's axe. Wisconsin taking on Minnesota. A huge game, but the question will be now, who will get the trophy and who will get the proverbial axe in terms of the playoff picture? Yeah, you talk about a trophy that is uh, an axe. It's six feet tall, so it's a tall trophy. It's up there with Chief Cattle Trophy, which is between Southwestern, um, no, sorry, Stephen F. Austin and Northwestern State, seven foot six. But this is a tall trophy, a big trophy. And you're right, this is a huge game in this one. And this is one that, you know, if you're in Minnesota, you want to win because not only do you get the win over your rival, but you get another landmark win to make your case to go into the Big Ten title game to hopefully get into the playoff if you're able to knock off Ohio State. So it's a huge game. Can they overcome any inconsistencies in the passing game? We know they have the receiving core. We know what Wisconsin wants to do, run the football, control the line of scrimmage. If they can't stop Jonathan Taylor, it's going to be a problem for Minnesota. This is interesting. This reminds me a lot of the, uh, the Iowa game for Minnesota. Mm. You know, and we'll see if they learn on how to stop the run, how to play great team defense, because that's all they're going to see against Wisconsin. I like Minnesota to win this ball game. College game day is going to be there. I think the Gophers – get the upset, and knock off the Badgers. Huge game for P.J. Fleck after getting that six-year extension, too. See if he is worth the money for the Minnesota Board of Trustees. That will do it for the College Football Tailgate Show. Don't forget to go to footballgameplan.com and youtube.com slash footballgameplan for the FCS kickoff show. And check out the FCS Opening Drive podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes for all of your FCS news and notes every Monday. For Emory Hunt, I'm David Hassigan. Enjoy week 13, and thanks for watching.